Hi there everyone, Petra here. Um, in my last video I had mentioned that I wanted to do a video on uh, growing up or the dynamics of growing up in a narcissistic family. But of course there is so much to be said on this very topic. So it is impossible for me to cram that all into one video. So I thought what I would do is just make a series on the dynamics of the, the narcissistic family unit. And um, today I wanted to kick that off with uh, the scapegoat child. And I've chosen this to start it off with because my husband himself uh, was raised by a narcissistic mother. Um, he was a scapegoat. His brother, the golden child, and his father, the codependent. Um, so yeah, what, what is the, the scapegoat? Um, the scapegoat can do no right in the eyes of the narcissistic parent. Um, your achievements are um, downplayed. Uh, dismissed even. Um, there is nothing that you can say or do that is enough to please the narcissistic parent. Uh, in the case of, of my husband, his, uh, his parents had a nursing home, a um, huge place that they ran um, as a family unit. And um, my husband and his brother from a very young, young age were, um, it, it was just demanded of them that they help out in this uh, home. So of course, you know, kids are kids. Kids do not want to be doing the chores of um, of the parents. So, I mean, it's okay to have one or two chores, you know, make up your bed or tidy up your room. Those are just normal chores to go about. But when it is, uh, when the responsibility is, or such a huge responsibility is placed onto tiny shoulders, that is devastating for a child. So. Even at the young age of, he, he might have been nine or ten, you know, if his, if his mum would get him to do the heavy chores of um, helping out in the nursing home, that would be giving patients insulin, you know, injections, um, helping to make, I don't know, 30 to 40 beds, doing the washing, doing the ironing. That is a lot of responsibility for a ten-year-old. And... I think what is even worse, it is not the responsibility of the 10-year-old to do that. So, of course, he got to a point where he became very, um, uh, what is the right word? Um, he, he, of course, um, started being very rebellious and said, I don't want to help out today. I don't want to help out in the business. I want to go out and play with friends, which is a normal request, request and it's the normal thing to do when you are 10 years old. But of course, this would be beaten out of him, beaten out of his brother. They would be punished for days on end, sent to bed without any food. You know, that their dad had to sneak up food to their room. So this is, this is just to show you um, how you can never do enough uh, uh, being the scapegoat in the family. And if you dare, if you have the audacity to say no to the narcissistic parent, then again, there will be hell to pay. Um, the narcissist parent projects their unwillingness to take responsibility onto the scapegoat child. So what does that look like? That is the blame game, that is shaming you, that is guilt tripping you. Because, as we all know, a narcissist can never or will never take responsibility for their own actions. So, of course, the easy way out is to project all of this onto your scapegoat child. And this is, you know, this is the birthing ground of all the shame and the, the, the blame and the guilt and also the birthing ground of people-pleasing. Because a child is put into a very um, conflicting situation. The child feels loyalty even if the parent is a narcissist, they feel loyalty towards this parent. But on the other hand, they also want to get that love from the narcissistic parent. And the only way a child knows how is to people please, is to please that parent, to do everything in their power to gain that love and affection from the parent. So a young child is always in the in the midst they're having this inner tug of war with themselves because they want to remain loyal and they want the love 
um, they know that they they are craving this love it is not given to them but on the other hand they don't want to be disloyal to the parent so it is a an extremely um, confusing place for a child to be in um, another thing is that the scapegoat child um, will be disliked even more by the narcissistic parent and why is this because the scapegoat the scapegoat child seeks the truth they are always looking for the truth so they will be asking questions on on just certain things that go on in the home it could excuse me excuse me it could be that um you know that it i think Maybe just a, a simple example is when it is when a child is beaten for saying no to the narcissistic parent, at some point they will say, Mummy or Daddy, why did you beat me? Why did you hit me? Why did you shout at me? This is questioning because a child wants the truth. You know, children are always, especially at a very young age, they are always asking questions. Why is the sky blue? Why is the why is it, you know, why is it windy outside? Why does it snow? Why this? Why that? So a child is naturally very curious. And um, especially with the scapegoat child, you will always be looking for the answers. So in order to get those answers, you will ask the questions. And then once again, it will be turned on to you. You will be beaten. You will be emotionally abused. You will be sent to your room, punished. And a child does not understand this. All a child wants is love and security and safety. That is all they want from their parent. So when it is not given to them, um, they lose touch of who they are. I mean, when we are born, we all we are born with a clean slate. We are born with unconditional love. And at a young age, the scapegoat and even in some cases, the golden child will have it beaten out of them, will have their little minds so manipulated by the narcissistic parent that at some point they just do not know who they are anymore. So even at that age, you are robbed of your authentic identity. And sometimes it takes a lifetime for you to rediscover uh, who you truly are. Um... You know, another thing to say on that is that a scapegoat is powerful enough to endure the abuse. Why do I say that? Because you are out of it. You are now the hurt adult. You have come through the abuse. So if you were powerful enough to endure it, you are also powerful enough to transcend that abuse and to live your life from authenticity and from utter joy. It is possible. Do not give up on yourself. I'm certainly not. Um, so yeah, the scapegoat will always seek the truth um, and therefore they are even more attacked by the narcissistic parent. And it'll, it'll show up in ways of if you loved me, you know, this is, this is the way the narcissistic parent um, goes about manipulating you, intimidating you, wanting to to um, enforce the control over you. So you will get things like, if you loved me, then you would do such and such. After all that I have done for you, you know, so the blame is laid on so thick that they love preying on your guilt. So the guilt will come out even more. And I think this is, you know, this is why even as an adult, you have so much trouble with guilt. You always feel guilty for wanting to voice your opinion, for wanting to stand up for yourself. You will feel the shame because you have been made to feel shameful about who you are, about what you have said, about what you have done. And nine times out of ten, as a child, you have done nothing wrong. This is purely the narcissistic and parental projection that is put onto you. Um, just by implying that you're selfish, for example, I mean, you know, to bring that example that I used um, about my husband, bring that up again, where he wanted to go out and play instead of do 
all these adult chores in the house. Um, just by the narcissistic parent implying that you are selfish, this was said to him, you are selfish for wanting to go out and play. You need to help me out in the house. Um, so just by implying that is enough to send you into a deep feeling of guilt. So the narcissistic parent plays on your clean conscience. Every child has a clean conscience. And by playing on this, they are making you into a people pleaser. This is what they want. Of course, we know this is what all narcissists want. They want you to please them all the time. They want you to put them on a pedestal. They want you to do uh, what they order you to do, what they demand of you. So they are always playing on your clean and clear conscience. The gaslighting comes into play here. And by the gaslighting, of course, you doubt yourself. You second guess yourself. And um, this is where at some point you wonder, well, maybe I am the bad person. Maybe there is every reason uh, for me to feel shameful and guilty. But no, it is not your fault. It is not your fault. This is all the stuff that has been implanted into your brain at a young age. This is how you have been conditioned to think, to feel, to not feel, to be guilty, to be shameful, to want to people please all the time. This is not you. Do not ever beat yourself up about this, that it is your fault. No, this is the way that you have been created by the narcissistic parent. So your conscience is a gift. Never forget that. Instead of being plagued with the memory of um, the memory of false blame, because it was false. I hope you realize that. Instead of being plagued by the memory of false blame and false guilt that was put onto you, you have to recognize your true worth. And this is the process of healing that you go through. Once you come to terms with the abuse um, and accept the fact this is what was done to you, then you can go ahead and you know, you know deep down inside, you just know it, that you have true value and true worth. And your true value and true worth, once you have acknowledged that, once you have owned that, that then you will have that solid foundation to build on from there. So the guilt, to just touch on that again, guilt to me is a worthless emotion. It really is. Because guilt is saying there is something wrong with what I have done. And you know that there is nothing wrong with what you did. You were simply raised by a narcissistic parent who made you think that everything about you was wrong, that everything you did was wrong, that you were never good enough, that you had to go out of your way to please them. And this is not the way the dynamics of a healthy parent-child relationship works. It should be the parent who is nurturing towards the child, who loves the child, who values the child, not the other way around. So do not, or, you know, let go of that guilt because there's nothing wrong with what you have done. Um... It is, it is really a, a, a useless emotion. And of course, the shame comes into that as well. It's the guilt and it's the shame. And the shame is that you are made to feel, you are conditioned to think ugly and evil thoughts about yourself. So the shame is that something is wrong with who you are. And the shame is implanted at, an early, at a very early age. And this is what you carry through into your teenage years, into adulthood, and there is nothing wrong with who you are. You know, if you can just keep reminding yourself of that, I was at no fault, I did nothing wrong, I was just being me, I was that little child who needed to be loved and validated and nurtured by my parent, but I wasn't. So when you get that clear for yourself that it is not your fault, you can move on from there. A very short video. 
to start off this series, please share your stories, your comments on um, how you felt and what you experienced as the scapegoat child. So thank you again for tuning in and um, looking forward to speak to you, speaking to you very soon in the next video. Keep those emails coming. Thank you once again. Love and light to all of you. Bye for now.